What's going on all you fantastic freelancers? William here and today I have a very special guest celebrating a very special occasion in the Bioware community. I have today with me Mr. Sofa Jockey. How are you doing today, good sir? I'm very well. William, um, you're going to have to cope with some English accent for a little while here, but, but otherwise <laughs> I think we should be good. There's nothing to cope with at all. You're fantastic. So I've got to ask you first and foremost, where does the name Sofa Jockey come from? Um, I think you've, you've seen on the internet far too much uh, but Breath 69, uh, Amazing Killers 53. I, I thought I'd go for something a, a little bit more laid back. So Sofa Jockey, I have a sofa. I'm riding my sofa. It's it's not a very aggressive name. It's a bit laid back, uh, as, as am I. Well, absolutely. And uh, so when did you first join up with BSN? I've been on BSN in its various incarnations for probably about a decade, going back to early Mass Effect days, and the forum has changed over that time. So what's BSN's story? Why should we care? What's it all about? What, what I find so interesting about BSN, and there's, there's two pieces, and you, you might have to remind me if I don't give you the second piece. The first piece is that with Twitter, so much of internet communication is, you know, 140 or 280 characters. And, and what that lacks is a really good in-depth, long-form conversation, which internet forums used to do so well. Now. Bioware had its official forums for many, many years. Uh, they would refresh them occasionally to go to updated formats. They used to be called in the original Dragon Age or Origins days, the, the Bioware Social Network or the BSN. Um, over time, they changed that to the Bioware Forum, although fans being fans still called it BSN. Um, and that, imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine fans doing what they want to do. So the name kind of stuck. And when Bioware shut down the forums in uh, the latter part of 2016, uh, the fans who had enjoyed talking, sharing, arguing, bickering on BSN needed a new home. So hence the new unofficial BSN to continue that chatting and bickering. Speaking of chatting and bickering, I've heard <laughs> and somewhat experienced uh, some fans being toxic. I, I, I think each part of the internet has its toxicity. You can go to the to the average YouTube comment feed <laughs> and see some. You can see some toxic if you want to. Uh, and part of that is fueled by the anonymity that the internet gives. There's not really an, any downside. I'd say sometimes it's passion too. Oh yeah, um, and it's something that David Gader, who was previously uh, one of the Bioware writers, uh, he, he used to say, uh, in one of his more frustrated moments, he'd talk about fan toxicity, but he'd also acknowledge, he'd acknowledge the fact that that toxicity would come from a place of investment, that, that people had uh, fallen in love with a style of game or a type of RPG or a type of character, uh, uh, and they had become extremely invested in something, sometimes to the point that they would be arguing for something to be uh, restored to the way they used to like it 10 years after the company had stopped doing it that way. Yeah, and we talked about this shortly before we started recording. It's kind of like what's been going on with Anthem. Everyone's getting their pitchforks out over this being an online game, uh, or a, a, a multiplayer massive shooter game, and looter shooter game, and fans are enraged. And I think it's because they have so much passion, but at the same time, geez, there's a difference between passion and uh, that toxicity we were talking about. Oh, 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 exactly. And if you go back in Bioware's history, you, you have a game like Shattered Steel, which was, if I recall, uh, you know, very early Bioware output, where you get to play as a mech. Mm -hmm. Bioware's history, I would argue, has come full circle, and multiplayer has been that all the way through their history. Absolutely. So, back to BSN. How many registered users do you all have? I know you're big, but I don't know how big. There are 10,000 people who have signed up to get the, the themes and the wallpapers and to be able to post. We also see every day uh, about 85% of the visitors are guests, so they're not signed up, but they pop in, they'll, they'll read a post or two. Because we don't know how many of those come every day, usually with forums, people will pop in and pop out. We think it could well be many hundreds of thousands of guests, but we simply don't know. 
Right, and to my viewers, guys, I'm not kidding. I've said in a couple videos before, you need to sign up for BSN if you're an Anthem lover or interested in Anthem in any way, shape, or form. Hell, they even have something for the Anthem skeptics. It's good, honest, furthering the conversation. I encourage you all go and sign up. Um, speaking of signing up, how many posts are there on the BSN forums? Like I said before, th there's a lot of everything, but how many in a, in a ballpark? Uh, over the last two years, we've had around 1.1 million posts, so... I'm sorry, wait, wait, wait. Two years and you're at 1.1 million? 1.1 <laughs> million posts. Um, it, it is kind of crazy. Kind of crazy? It's absolutely crazy. <laughs> wow. But people people can discuss. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some typical examples. It is amazing how much you can discuss whether the hero of Ferelden should come back. Uh, you could discuss that for pages and pages. Uh, for the recent game Mass Effect Andromeda, you can have a, a forum thread about Jarl, who I would argue is an awesome character that will go on again for many hundreds of pages. And it's, it's deep, invested conversation. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I mean, everyone's well thought out for the most part, and no one's just mudfling or, uh, they have something to say, and it's usually very well thought out, and they just continue the conversation. It goes on for, I think the longest forum I saw had something around 173 pages. That's something. That's incredible. Um, so I gotta ask you, what's your biggest accomplishment in BSN's history? I think there's probably two pieces. One piece is just the ability to have a long-form conversation. Uh, and I'm not lock knocking Twitter. Twitter has its excitement. Um, it has its uses. Uh, it's immediate, but you try and have a conversation on Twitter. It's a, it's a bit like a, a fish in a fish tank. Um, you know, a few minutes go by and you're, you've kind of lost the thread of where you started. At least with a forum structure, you can, if, if you really have the, uh, the stomach to, go back and see where the conversation started. And for things like uh, law discussions, for things like quest information, it is much better to be able to cover those in a forum than in a Twitter conversations. And I, I take my hat off to, to Mark Dara for all his tweet answers. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the king of AMAAAs. Mark, I still haven't gotten any of my tweets answered yet. I'm, I'm kind of, <laughs> I, I'm a little hurt. I've got really good ones, man. But I, I understand he's a he's a busy guy. And I'm looking forward yeah. to uh, PAX West and uh, uh, what's it like? Gamescon when we got, might get more information. Exactly. So we, we've got Gamescon where we're expecting people this is my hunch that people will be able to play the demo that was available at E3 and we've got the PAX West where there'll be a panel on story. So I think it'll be slightly different at those two conventions, um, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, so long form conversation is part one. Part two is the ability to keep the spirit of what BSN has been. This rather strange eclectic spirit of being able to be skeptical and being able to be a fanboy in the same place. And we will draw the line at people being hateful or slurs or being really unpleasant, but we try and allow that space to say what it wants to say. Um, so it's, it's, it's not a bunch of fanboys squashing the conversation and only allowing a particular type of message to come out. What are your most memorable moments on BSN? Is it like a post? Is it a specific conversation you had with someone or... What, what, what is it? What's your most memorable moment? There are there are some classics. Uh, you can go back a, a few years. The the infamous Tally's sweat thread remains a classic. This is where a, a poster decided to explore what Tally's the inside of Tally's suit would smell like. Oh dear God! And then do a, a, a chemical breakdown of the composition of the sweat. What the hell? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm not kidding. Um, and that's a, a thread we've kept for posterity. So you, you really can go from the weird. But beyond that, it's the joy of just seeing people having fun. And there's a great deal of done through uh, memes and through images and through comedy. Uh, and for me, that works. So do you have anything planned for the future with BSN? I think with BSN, there's this two-step process. There's the, there's the hiatus phase in between games when the forum is a little quieter. You see a, a few more of the regulars. You see a lot of sometimes very aimless conversations and then you've got that second phase when you're in the, the nine months running up to a new game launch. And that's probably for me the most fun when people are teasing secrets uh, out of Bioware. Um, and boy, oh boy, they are difficult to tease secrets
secrets out of unless they want to share them. Yeah, and that's fair enough. There's an interesting balance between information and speculation. And me being just now joining up with BSN, what's it like when the game is actually out? Uh, what, what can I expect? It can get pretty busy. At, at the moment, we have uh, four, around 4,000 daily visitors. At peak, we have 20,000 daily visitors. So the, there's a five-fold upscale in activity. Uh, where it's going to get really interesting, I think, is in the co-op side, because the forums have in the past had active threads supporting the multiplayer. Previously, the Dragon Age in Inquisition multiplayer. Before that, the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. And then Andromeda. Exactly. So there's a lot of action on the threads from people being involved in the, in the, in the co-op elements. And with Anthem being a primarily co-op game, that makes it particularly interesting because we're seeing a group of the population who are a little bit, uh, should we say, feeling as if they're put to one side because they're solo players. So one of the things we'd very much like to do is to help those people match up with friends, uh, at least BSN friends, or that we can discuss and develop straightforward tips and tricks so they get better at what they're doing or at least not suck as much. Well, I, I don't think sucking is going to be so much the issue. Uh, with the solo players, I want them them to realize you can play the game solo. No one's ever said you can't. Uh, sure, you'll run into three people maybe in the open world since you're in a, a dedicated server with three other randos, um, but I, I think it can be played solo. You can get the end game gear solo. It's just not going to be as easy. It's not going to be as fun. If I may, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this story, I'm what you might a mature gamer. I been around a few years. Mass Effect 3 multiplayer was my first multiplayer, uh, aged beginning with four. So I was not a spring chicken. Um, and I believe there will be some solo players who, if they get the right support, would more than up to giving it a try and would enjoy it if they tried it. And they, they may try it and they say, no, this is not for me. I'll stay solo and that's fine. But we want to provide a supportive environment that people can give it a go. Absolutely. Wednesday, I'm going to be publishing a video on that subject in particular. But anyways, I think that about covers it. Do you have anything else you want to add on BSN before uh, we sign off? I think all I would say is thank you, William, for the chance to chat. It's good to connect and community is everything. Oh, absolutely. And thank you so much for supporting your anthem and, and letting me have such a time and a half on BSN. Anyways, guys, that about does it for this little interview, I'd call it. We have the link for the BSN forums in the description below. Sofa Jockey is on there regularly. And uh, if you see him online, be sure to say hello. Sofa Jockey, as ever, it is a pleasure, my friend. Thank you. That's all we have for today. I hope all you fantastic freelancers have a phenomenal day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next one. Peace out, everyone.